the whole time. Dust 2 is upon us, though, Tom, and we had some doubts, some interests coming into this. Not a map stat statistically that really is fantastic for both teams, but again, Emmy coming into the fray, maybe him instead of Crystal. This is a map that he prefers, one that he'd like to work on a great deal more. So maybe they do have a few things up their sleeve after all. But Glaive also said in the pre-game in, uh, pre interview, you know, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that we have to bring out. Well, listen, now's probably the time there, Chief, because you lost the first map. Yeah, and in recent form, they did manage to beat out Mouse Sports. And in the Mouse Sports game on Dust2 for Astralis was 16 to 5. So let's not sit here and say that we doubt them completely. This is definitely a map they can play and can win. It's just versus the top teams in the world, they've had some struggles. The question will be, can Godsent recreate some of the magic that they've already thrown out? And they might be in for a nasty surprise because it's a fast push. Hugging the close wall has given a lot of space to Astralis and already given them the opener. Yeah, the opening pick is good, and Stiko and Zen have both been obliterated down to around the 10 HP mark. Madden at least getting one. He had a lot of success in the pistols on train. But his days are numbered. As are God sense, it would seem. Looking to boost up, do get a bit of success, but the smoke is still in play, and Device keeps just putting these speculative shots through there. Anticipating that he's about to get peaked, which is the correct assumption. But Dupree is the player that is making all the shots stick, all the shots land, and the vice closes things out. Astralis pick up the first pistol on Dully came through for Godsent. That was a 10-5 half that ended up going the way of Astralis when they were on their CT side of train. It was their T side that let them down. And dear Lord Madden is a beast. He's just absolutely wrecked the vice in the early stages of this round. Of course, the rifles still stand. So for the side of Godsent, they still have to be careful here, but they're going to boost Emmy back up to the site. And because long control is unlikely to be too successful, it seems like they might challenge for short instead. Ooh, Stiko nearly flicking to the head of Dupree. Wasn't able to pull the trigger in time, and the AK ripped through. Rattled him in position, smoking off CT. And simultaneously pushing Dupree over into the upper tunnels. It is Madden that is up against them. And he's pretty much isolated from the rest of his teammates. But he did land that incredibly brisk headshot earlier on. He's clearly feeling it. He's clearly in some good form. And now multiple T's pushing his way. The second he checks window, he gets neutralized. Unfortunate timing. Watson do still have a fair bit of weaponry at their disposal. And I couldn't really blame them if they did go back to save this. I think it is a reasonable decision to go for, all things considered. Now, on Twitter, Glaive did put a tweet out earlier today before they played this match, saying they'd made a few alterations and a, a few tweaks, and they were hoping it would work out. Well, off the basis of that train, not quite yet, but it might be a work in progress. Then again, I, I guess you have to kind of look at it and the, what they played last time. So it, it wasn't too long ago where we saw Astralis actually play versus Godsend, and it was 16-3, 16-10. We saw them play Inferno, New Convertigo. So if you're preparing for this match and you're making tweaks and changes, probably didn't expect Train. Uh, maybe they did. Maybe I'm not giving them credit to come up with in this series and thus weren't necessarily prepared in turn. Still, though, they opted to move this towards Dust2. They could have had a nuke. It's going to end up being the third. And I will say, if we get to a third map, I am all in on Astralis. This is the one map where I have my questions initially because it's one that they were weakened on. So the fact that we now look to see whether or not they're going to be comfortable here is another thing altogether. The pistols so far, though, for God's sake, haven't been going so well. A much better start to either map than what we've seen so far for Astralis. And well, there was only a difference of a few rounds in the last map, so let's not take too many liberties here. Yeah, I wonder if the things up their sleeve that he was referring to and the, the changes they've made is Nico may very well get some kills and end up happening for him. We're more designated around us. Maybe maybe this is just like a change in the veto that they feel like they're much better polished and ready to rock on Dust too, so they can start floating this a lot more in the future, catch a few teams off guard setting their sights further on down in the tournament and some of the other teams that likely will very realistically take them the distance. Now, it just so happens that Godsent are no slouches and they've, they've already taken Astralis down a peg. 
but maybe that is something to watch out for as the tournament progresses on. Magisk straight through the smoke, extinguishing the Molotov and Zen. Vanishing Magisk back to the bench once more. And it's the first time that Godsent have had really any kind of a stranglehold over any round, and Glaive while flashed with a UMP puts it down range onto Zen. Madden stuck in no man's land and has now been put out of his misery. Astralis can get onto the bomb. They've got the successful plan down, but this time Godsent have weapons, and it's a three on three. Even still, this B site retake is one that arguably the one of the toughest in the game, and while wow, Zipix. Actually going to go for the repeat here. Sticko being a bit more patient in his take, but Farlik's still very far away, and I don't even know if he's going for this at all. It looks like they're just going to duck out of the round. No kit available to them, and the time ticking too far gone. So Astralis are going to get off to a flying start on their T side. And when we talk about Dust2 as a map in general, we talk about that momentum, especially on the T side, and getting yourself rolling and building into the match. Astralis not needing to exit the site, so they won't hand Sticko any extra kills, and they are going to keep themselves the AWP, the AK, and more importantly, the ridiculous bank that they've already built up. Oh, cash to swim in, not so much for Godsense, who unfortunately have to go for a save. Two players yet to get off the mark, it's Emmy and Farlik. Astralis, again... A lot of presence being shown across on the B side of the map in tunnels. They did this last round. It seems like it's a consistent theme. Keeping their options available to quickly wrapping around on B. So Godsent have to respect that. Originally having two players on site have now drawn one across back to middle. They're joining Stiko around CT side. They do have a bit of utility still at their disposal. But Astralis playing it slowly, but they're getting the rewards. Device gets peaked by Farlig. It's the orb that's been dropped, but at least it's in range of Zen to pick up and go use it on B. But he may be about to get wrapped on. And an orb against a full-fledged T-side, it's not going to yield too many results. Glaive actually throwing the smoke to try and block off the peak from the double doors. So it allows him to go for the wide swing, knowing the orb was dropped down here. And there's a likelihood they could get peaked from window or doors. I like the play from Astralis, they're being super careful. Oh. As a result of that, I think Glaive has pushed through the smoke. Has Madden seen him? Look at Madden's eyes, they were wide. <laughs> he knew that Glaive was there. He's like, where is he? Where is he hiding? The man has wall hack in his eyes. That's basically what I've just learned now. He spreads them a little bit wider and he somehow knows that Glaive is there. I don't know if they bumped into each other in the smoke. Maybe that was it, but he's got a rifle. Quick pick, spots the man above, and Madden goes huge, but it might not be enough. He's found himself a couple of kills, but the fact is, Zen already looks like he might just be trying to save this up. The remaining two players of Astralis are not going to be peaking. He might be able to catch an exit if Dupree goes for the cross. But at the same time, I don't know if it's worth the risk of this AWP. Like, the money for Astralis is not going to be in the gutter. Whereas, if you think about what's there at the moment for the CT side, every little helps. That play from Madden was absolutely outrageous, by the way. The fact he gets three kills. Okay, fair enough. The first one, the timing favored him through the smoke. But those two kills, the last one... The clarity of mind to instantly pre-fire at the top of the site is so good. He saw the shadow briefly and just flicked straight up there. So well done. Unfortunately, we kind of touched on this at the start of the round. They have tons of cash, Tom. So, I mean, sure, we got a couple of kills. Not that it really matters a great deal for Astralis. They can easily buy those weapons back. But you're just seeing glimpses of what Godsent have to offer. The, the problem I'm seeing at the moment is the players that we sort of highlighted from the last map. Emmy obviously being a bit more of a surprise, but more importantly, Farlig has had a quiet start to this game. And that scares me in the sense that, like, once Astralis get rolling, they're very, very difficult to stop. You can already see they're going to go for a timing peak onto Long. Dupree has been gifted the AWP because he has that timing spot. And actually, both players miss. That is not the result it was expecting at all. There needed to be death, someone needed to fall, and while Farling goes back for more, just to make sure the prophecy comes true. It's pretty wild that neither player even landed a leg shot, just straight up both missed. To see that again in slow motion to fully decipher what the hell happened. Emmy though, taking the initiative, playing aggressive on Catwalk. 
is sick and tired of being pushed and bullied around from the Danes on Astralis. Takes matters into his own hands. And now Zan is peering down middle. Flick on to Dupree. That should be the round falling into place for Godsend. Better late than never. Now Astralis try and do as much damage as possible. They still have a minute to play with. And the fact that they both have plenty of utility, they can smoke the cross. They could even still go for this, Tom, if they so chose. Yeah, it's not a position at all where they need to save, especially with their knowledge of the economy of their opponent. Sure, Zen has a bit of extra cash, but the rest of them are in an awkward position. Even a couple of kills here would probably be more valuable than just saving the weaponry, although they are taking their sweet time if they are planning on moving. 5-0 up. Not really needing to take any risks, and... Well, for God's sake, they're in the same position. They don't need to hunt down these weapons. There's no value in it. They need to make sure that their own economy stays strong, especially on that CT side, and especially because they've been enjoying a double orb setup, be it Madden or if when he dies, it drops into the hands of somebody else. It does look like the clock's just going to tick down. A slightly uneventful end to the round, but one that I'm sure Godsent are going to be quite happy with. For sure. I think Astralis, though, will be relatively happy. They held on to all the guns, so it just allows them to stretch that economy out a little bit further. Additionally, on top of that, they didn't give the AK across to the CTs. Not that I think they'd have picked up three orbs, so that isn't completely unheard of on Dust 2 CT side. But I feel like they'd have preferred to have got the AK in their hands instead. And so we get back into the familiar territory of both teams having full weaponry. And Astralis, same standard start as usual. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. Stiko was getting close towards the entrance. Was maybe thinking about trying to push through. But took a bit of nade damage. That's put him off and Dupree sprays down onto Farlig. Loses his life needlessly. And that gives Astralis another step back into the round. And maybe they can just bring Godsent down to their knees instantly. They're not going to be playing slowly any longer. They pick up the pace. Dupree picks up the headshot, as does Glaive. And the Godsent defense has fallen once again. They are looking very good and confident on this map. Like, Dupree especially, a player that when he gets going, you, you don't win. That's it. That's GG. If, if your star entry frag is performing well. That's the, the thing that sort of interested me about Train so much is that, I don't know if you agree, but it seemed like in a lot of cases, Glaive almost took over that mantle. And then to this round, Dupree was looking like he's back in the lead. So I don't know if they're sharing that role or it's just dependent on utility or positioning. They almost look like they're trying to work as a, a tag team in this situation, which is a pretty terrifying prospect. Zen, in an attempt to save the orc, they do have a little bit of extra cash to spare, but they don't want to lose all the weapons here. And Astralis, knowing how much money they have available in the bank, they're going to risk it. They're going to push through. Zen will be able to take down one, but the push continues. They can't lose any guns, and they do. Sticko falls, and although they have enough for the buy into this round, it still puts real pressure on their economy. Yeah, I mean, going back to that point that you raised, I think we we mentioned this when we were casting um, the, the the grand finals yesterday of the DreamHack, you know, Open November. When it came to Exile, and is this a very interesting dynamic? Hold that thought because it's going to be aggression. Astralis aren't interested in who the entry is, who the first player they're in. They're going to share that burden, push straight out onto Long. God sent throwing a few grenades, but. It is Astralis that are brute forcing their way in. Farlig is holding it down on the car. I'm not sure as to whether he could be peaked from middle. They put a lot of the emphasis over on A long, and this did bypass middle control. That's allowed a couple of the T's to actually scurry their way across into the ramp, and the only thing that saved Glaive was the wall. Otherwise, he's a dead man. Down to 15 HP. They've already lost Zed out on middle which is putting even more pressure on the rest of the troops over on A. Farlig needs to survive, but Madden's gone down alongside him. Farlig still goes into position, comes out of the scope at the worst possible moment, and Dupree will punish him. This round, again, is falling into Astralis' hands, and comfortably so. But to go back to that point, I wonder if it's more based on positioning, Tom. If Glaive just prefers to play around the Pop Dog area, and it just so happened that they were deciding to go more aggressive on Pop Dog and B as opposed to wherever Dupree was playing. That is very possible. Right? Especially with 
the rounds that we've actually seen them sort of switch it up so far in Dust 2. A lot of the time on Dust 2, it's more spawn dependent. He's going to be going for those early picks. As said, we saw with Dupree, that AWP pick that he went for was solely based on him having the best spawn. I don't think he's planning on taking that primary AWP back off device anytime soon. This is starting to become a running theme now for Godsend Mo. They had a very good first map. Their choice, successful. They look great on trade. But again, we gave them the luxury of, well, not both pistols, but a second round and a pistol, which is basically the same thing in terms of follow-up rounds. And then they just had a very, very stellar CT side. At the moment, they're struggling. Emmy with the AWP. He had some success previously. And okay, he's going to drop a couple of players, but it really doesn't matter too much at this point, Vince. No, not at all. It's, uh, it's a case where Astralis will happily sacrifice all the guns to take anything away from godsend any little scrap and we mentioned this i think it was the first or second day that counter strike is a game where you you have to be oppressive to your enemies like you can't have mercy you can't allow them any luxuries you have to make them fight for every inch every dollar that they can possibly save and astralis the masters of constricting teammates or opposition sorry i should say definitely not teammates that's a bad <laughs> thing <laughs> maybe ex-teammates you make a bad play and glaive's just got his hands around your throat exactly no, of course not of course not <laughs> the joke sorry glaive don't hurt me um either way we are looking like they're gonna try and that up into this b site a very good hold in fact from godsend they've got three players here so if this round goes wrong then we we ring the alarm bell somebody can go spam into the bell on inferno and start dinging away because they've got everybody here if they don't manage to win this round then i think it's going to be an absolute slaughter and it isn't looking too good the nade comes through but sticker goes down and they trade not even evenly they get an advantage in this situation you're not retaking this b site godsend you need a miracle you need a mistake and unfortunately as said the two top fraggers from the last map are now looking at the two bottom fraggers of this map of course, it doesn't work like that. You're not just going to be able to bring everything over, but more so for Farlig, we needed to see that star potential of the Danish Opera. And thus far, well, there have been five Danes doing pretty well. Unfortunately for Godsend, it's not the one they purchased. And just why, uh, while Godsend go back to save, and obviously Astralis will extend their lead to 8 1. What a great problem it is to have as well, Tom, where you're deciding who the most aggressive player and who the entry frag on your team should be. <laughs> Like, that, that really is a fantastic position to be in, you know. You have Dupree that can go super aggro, but Glaive's up to the task as well. Like, he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. Yeah. Also, the quieter players on the last map have come through. Like, Zipex had a really rough first map. He was getting a lot of assists, but not converting most of the kills currently five and one hasn't had a whole lot to do but it's still successful device as well looking strong with the awp but more importantly dupree is just on an absolute tear and they have been finding pick off the pick with every site they push into even starting again to as they did on the ct side of train like take a few hefty risks like just go for pushes down mid go for fights early on into tunnels they've realized that they have got them on the edge of falling out of this map so they're going to push down they're going to pressure the foot is firmly placed on the throat. God sent. They need to push back. They need to fight back. They need to do something. Because right now, they're getting obliterated. Yeah, this, this feels like... I want to see God sent try and dictate the pace of some of these rounds. Because right now, they're giving up way too much real estate. And Astralis are just waltzing in. This must feel like uh, almost a pug to them. You know, it's just been so straightforward. Emmy, at least he's going to put down a bit of damage. But... Felt compelled to go back in. Understandably, he was stuck down the ramp. The new grenades were going to be flung his way. But I'd like to see them dictate the pace with some aggressive plays. Like, if you're going to go out, at least go out on your own terms. Don't let Astralis basically bully you into submission. And that's what it feels like right now, Tom. This is kind of brutal to watch, if I'm being honest. And after a great train performance, it would be a real shame if Godsend got destroyed like 16-1, 16-2 here. Not that it undoes the fact that they took a map off Astralis by any stretch, but you, you want to see them play for a bit of pride. Yeah, for sure. Like, it, it, Let's be brutally honest here and say Godsend, they are not ready for this sort of battle yet. They shouldn't be. If they are, I would be blown away and almost start calling it a honeymoon period. Oh my god. Come on, device. 
Like, I know that they took a map off you, but give them a chance. At least allow them to last past the 10 second marker in the round. That was a ridiculous shot. But yeah, they shouldn't be ready for this task yet. They changed in-game leaders and have played one series. Oh. Madden. It's awkward. He's being spotted from afar as well. A lot of damage being done across the board. Dupree low. Farlig, of course, gone. Zen tagged. And Madden is not exactly healthy. In fact, it's going to get a little bit worse. In fact, he's going to be pushed. Device. This is cruel. He's even given up the AWP. Dupree being low. He hands it off and then continues to fight with the rifle. Got sent again down to just three men or, well, two in a bit. Thicko, he doesn't even have any armor. This fight is not a particularly good one for Godsend. No, especially as they're already trailing by two players. Device, really stepping it up since that train performance, mainly with the AK. Now, Emmy, who's been in ramp a number of times, not really had too much success from here. He's stuck in there again. Device is on for the ace. Already a 4K as he rips off the head of Emmy. Mystico getting one. Device now shows up and takes his head off. The king is back. Long live Device. Astralis 10-1 lead. And God sent very little money to play with. Yep, I'm just going to let that one play out. Not really much you can do about that one, Farleg, unfortunately. And his woes continue and... Well, we, we sort of spoke about it earlier. Like, it, it's a nice problem to have well, with having that many players who can entry frag. It's also nice when Device just decides he's going to kill everyone. There you go, oh. Farlick, though! What is that? That completely caught me off guard. He's not even broken a smile. He's just digged three players in a matter of seconds. A man who's basically done nothing so far in this map has just exploded onto the server. And that's what we were talking about. Unshackle yourself, go for aggressive plays, dictate the pace of the action, and what do you know? You've carved out a few headshots. Of course, it's not a play that you can rinse and repeat every single round. But you kind of make these lucky moments. Not that that was luck by any stretch from Farley, but the fact that he got away with rattling off three shots without being counted on, you make that by forcing it, by implying that you may push through middle at the same time, divide and conquer Astralis, knock them off kilter. They've just been on autopilot. Like, nothing's been difficult for the, those guys so far. Those are the kind of plays we were talking about. And now Godsend can try and rummage around the back of them. Astralis assume there's some players on the A site, whether it be Goose, whether it be backside or ramp, positions that Godsend have played in numerous times. May not expect a fast rotation from two players, but they do have a smoke for it. So even though Farlig has just pulled off a miracle play, this actually is still very winnable for Device and Magus. Can keep in mind that Device is already on 14 frags and we're only into the 12th round. And he could be adding a bunch more to that tally. Stick up, Farlig both low and Magus takes them both down, spins across and saves the round. They didn't get a round win off it. It doesn't even matter. Magisk just slams them back into the ground. It's almost like he gifted them a little bit of hope, gave them a chance, and then snatched it away. That is as brutal as it gets. And Oh, that glimmer of hope. That candle at the end of the tunnel has been blown out swiftly. 11 to 1. We do have a purchase coming up for Godsent. The wind in their sails was... Part removed. Now they're huffing and puffing and just trying to cling on to the edge of the raft because Astralis have come back swinging after map one, Vince. Yeah, they've thrown out the rubber dinghy, but in, in the last ditch effort of raw bullying and giving false hope, there's a hole in it and it's deflating very quickly. And God sent, lost at sea, it would seem. We kind of expected it, if we're being honest. That train performance definitely gave me some faith. I still think there's a lot to be happy about if you got sent. You have to take the context of what this team is going through currently. Stats do look pretty bleak, but it's a team that have a lot of potential, a lot of skill, and give Emmy more time. Maybe they can be something special. God sent, though, putting up a fair fight with Farley getting two. He's really came alive these last couple of rounds. That last eagle play didn't yield the round courtesy of Magisk and Device. 
And this time it's the Vice again with the AWP through the box onto Madden. Zed will have to rely on a jump shot, you feel, if he's going to get a kill from here. But decides against it and the Vice goes for the peak. He's picked up another two. Stiko just has to save the AK. And Astralis will be romping to a 12-1. And if Stiko is not careful, he will get picked off by Device, who decides better of the angle as he shimmies back down long on 16 kills and 5 deaths. There's a sick part of me that really wants to see a Devil Walk's face in this moment. I wouldn't be surprised if he was as bold as you or I in this situation, because <laughs> what do you say? If you're a coach in this situation, it's like, oh yeah, guys, if we could just stop getting absolutely owned by one of the best teams that ever touched Counter-Strike, that'd be cool. Because it, it seems like whatever they attempt, if they go aggressive, they get shut down. Even if they win the or win the duels in this sort of situation, the trades are just so fast from Astralis. They don't give them a chance to even think about the next frag, and then you just have the vice. Like when this man is this good, there is nothing you can do. It doesn't matter. He's 16 and 5, and he has both Dupree and Magisk playing at almost full capacity, it seems. This is very impressive from Farleg as well. It seems like he's just looking to take the map into his own hands, and you know what? He's got another opener. Yeah, and th this really is going off the back of what we were hoping to see more of, is, is these kind of... Throw it into the wind place, you know, just go out swinging, hoping for the best. Dupree will bag himself. Stiko on the site, who was the last line of defense on the site itself. But Emmy at least locking it down on long. Madden toying with the idea of pushing through the smoke. Knows somebody's in there. He tried to move through, and now trajectory of that flashbang will definitely give it up. But it's only an MP9. If he had an M4, maybe it was a doable, but at range, Zen is going to put his SMG to use. And that puts the Vice in a 1v2 on 13 HP. Now, they don't have any grenades or smokes to flush him out. And the bomb is planted for his position. Device is clutched so many times from situations like this. But Zen, with the wide swing and the AK, picks up a third kill and picks up a second round. Yeah, a big round from Zen. And, I, and that's at least something for them. Because Zen is one of those players that... If he does get going, he can be a pretty terrifying prospect. I mentioned at the sort of top of the show that he's someone that has actually been their highest rated player over the last few months, or at least the last time I checked. So he has been playing very, very well for this side. Unfortunately, that has come at the cost of some of the other players being a little bit quieter. Now, the spam actually gets nothing. We had multiple orbs. We still do, in fact. And, well, you never know. It's going to be Sticko to actually get the first... AWP kill of the round. Maybe not expected with the men holding them on the other side, but it's one that will be welcomed for Godsend. Bit of reprieve from all the aggression. The Astralis have been putting down range. Stiko with the AWP strikes for a second time. The Astralis have the bomb under wraps from Zipex, but he is isolated from his teammates. And there's a molly down on lower tunnels, which keeps Magisk at bay. Madden peaks a little bit too preemptively before the smoke has a chance to fully plume. But Zen is there on spot to deliver the fatal shot to Dupree. Surely, Tom, God sent about to pick up a third before this half ends. You'd hope. Uh, the two players alive are the two players that have been in clutch situations many times before. The incendiary will hold them back, and actually the full force of God sent is starting to converge on this B site. They've been locked into the tunnels. You can see that Sticko's in a good position. And Emmy, a bit of a risk, but he still just patiently waits for the remaining players. No, he has support. And Zen is already going to put one of them in the grave. Magis left, low on HP. It was Stralis versus Godsent. The second map is underway. And well, blink and you miss it, Vince. This was a 12-3 domination for Stralis. Yeah, boot up Nuke. Let's let's go to the third map already, Tom. <laughs> I think it's safe to say this one is over. And honestly, with it being Nuke next, you could just say let's wrap up the series. That's wow. a bit harsh to God sent, to be fair, because let's be honest, we thought Train would be the same. And they proved I thought I was wrong, toxic so. board. You're meant to be <laughs> Big V, come on. <laughs> You'll, you can be Big T and I'll be toxic ball from now on. There we go. <laughs> Well, already it is looking like the beginning of the end. The pistol round's gone very far in favor of Astralis already. Two kills coming up. Dupree and Glaive combining. Sticko 
He's got to be careful here because Glaive is still lurking in the corner towards Long. An irritating position to clear. He rounds it and oh, he's going to get a shot off, but that will be all a double up. Well, leaving it on to Madden and Zen. No utility left to try and get anything done. They're just going to have to out-aim Astralis, which they managed to do on map number one, but they will not achieve anything here. A second pistol one and potentially the second map with it. Yeah, it certainly feels that way. I mean, all jokes aside, I think Godsent have, have definitely earned the respect of giving them a chance on Nuke after that train performance. So I'm not going to completely write them off. But in terms of this map, it definitely seems as though this is maybe a step too far. Tag through the double doors, at least onto Mages. Knocks him down to 62. There's an incendiary in a flashbang to greet Farlig on his approach. And two scouts in play with some pistols. May have Godsent getting hot and heavy with a fast push, a fast play. They have utility as well. All players have smokes. So they can throw a ton of these out, but it could end up being an overinvestment that doesn't really pay off at all. No dividends will be firing their way. It's just grenades and bullets. A nade bouncing and banking off the wall, landing into the pocket of Stiko, taking some damage from the hand of Glaive. They've at least brute forced their way up catwalk. And with the scout at this range, maybe they can claim some heads and make something of this round yet. But they also seem like they're stuck in middle to me, Tom. Like they've put in loads of smokes, but they're not really pushed behind it because they're faking it towards B. Somehow they managed actually to get an opener onto magic in the window. The rotation is strong though. And with the doors now facing in this direction, it becomes a lot tougher for them to cross. An easy cleanup in the end. There was a part of me that wanted device to go down for buying an MP5, but uh, alas, it's not to be. And he will keep it into this next round where unfortunately for Godsend, they have a, a horrible decision to make. Either Eco and let them get to 15 and try and win 12 rounds in a row. Wouldn't recommend. Or force by and try and fight him back. All right, Sticko. He'll do it with the scout. Device had to use the AWP to hit shots like that. Maybe if a few more of those go his way, we could at least be seeing an extra round or two on the board. Definitely possible. Thing is, though, even though Astralis have lost the life of Device, which is a, a key member to lose, the... Weapon is dropped in an awkward spot where Godsent would have to traverse out into the open to potentially pick it up, and that could do more harm than good. Well played, Smoke, Magisk all alone. Now that he's the brains behind the operation, you'd feel like he's got a good read of the situation. And we'll play this accordingly. We'll have the comms to the rest of the, the troops coming in. There's one player that you'd probably want in this spot right now. It is Magisk. Pulling all the strings for the rest of his team. But how is the utility from Godset? The grenade perfectly placed and the headshot delivered to perfection. Lots of damage, but Magisk has fallen. And now the CTs decide to push through the smoke. And the MP5 has now worked against Astralis. Godsent looking good to pick up the round. They have converted from Stiko's scout headshot through middle. Yeah, it wasn't quite a jumping PP -pee Bison punish, but it, it was at least using his own gun against him, which is, is something I like to see. Thankfully, it has been discarded and thrown away, and actually, Godsent have got themselves a lifeline. Uh, as said, it, it's a it's a bleak situation. So they've got a very very long way to go, and Dupree is going to make things an extra bit costly. Remove one of those extra guns from play, although for Godsent at this point, they might be able to go and retrieve something a little bit extra. On the other side of things, Glaive just happy to chill out towards Long, not really risking his gun at all. And Madden, I think he's realized that in this sort of scenario, pushing too much further forward could be the loss of his own gun. Although he's just going to try and hunt down the opposition economy as much as possible because that really is a ticket back into this match. If you can keep the CT economy down in the slums for two or three rounds of Astralis maybe over-purchasing way for Godsent to start to string some together and build the confidence up like you spoke about that momentum. Get that mentality under wraps, but Dupree's for mass spitting fire at Madden. who's had a bit of a, a rough go of it, was very impactful on the train. 
has really yet to find his mark here on Dust 2. Zen and Glaive, pretty much identical trade. One HP difference in it, which will favor Zen. But there's Deco again showing up when it's needed to be counted with that scout. Three Molotovs tossed towards the back of the site with HEs designated over on the CT. They do fire a few speculative shots through the smoke, but nothing too significant. But now there's some damage coming in. They look to try and boost over. Dupree coming out worse for wear, but still sprays down. And Glaive goes in on Zen, leaving Sticko with his scout and Farlix AK on a weakened body alongside it. And there's bullets raining through the car. Scout shot misses the first time, but Stiko connects two Ooh. in a row and puts this round in close proximity. Farlig's gone down. Stiko's on for the ace. He's on for the clutch. He's on for all the accolades. And that's what Godsent require to just hang on by a thread in this game. That's how good Astralis has been. But can Stiko be up to the mark? Misses his chance, perhaps, and down he goes. Live by the scout, die by it. Beautiful effort from Stiko, though, but Astralis now have 11 map points. Yeah, a brutal way for that one to fall apart as well. They, they finally came in with what looked like a better buy than the one that Astralis had, but the Danes still make it work. And even with some incredible shots from Stiko, you forget that he actually kicked off the round with one as well and a tag through the doors. Like, the guy is doing over 300 damage. Can someone step up to the mark and help him out a little bit, please, here, Godsend? Because this is not the man that we normally look to be the carry of this side. But unfortunately, Madden, a bit quiet. Farlig not quite been there. Emmy not putting up anywhere near the numbers of the last map. Although, as said at the beginning, that was a surprise. Nonetheless, it is looking like the end. A first kill already comes up for Device. He has been phenomenal in this map. Night and day to what we saw in the last. Now, is there anything left in the tank for Godsend? Does seem like fumes are all they have left. Dupree, though, and Glaive, both wide swinging middle, get punished. And lives are deemed forfeit. Magus up on the window also could have some help from Device, who is on the other side of the smoke, waiting to pierce through there and show his hand. But a Molotov there to greet him. It's well placed. And now Godsent changing up their angles. They're going into tunnel. Could be the final play of the map. We'll see Magus trade out one for one. through the smoke it's gone from bad to worse and now sticko's left in a clutch situation once again he's gonna take a risk or so it seemed a little bit worried that there might be both players around this angle he knows he needs to try and turn this into a 1v1 but i don't think he's going to be given the chance zipix is waiting back he should know now that both players are going to be around this angle trying to bait them in but there's plenty of time and for astralis they almost want to know that he's stuck towards this site. The plant coming through. Device even baits him with the footsteps. He's just playing with his opponent here. Sticko trying to mind game Device, but it's just not working. And eventually Device will kill him through the door. An absolute 